three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson. Anderson, and you're watching freaking Jiggy Jag TV. Loud and proud, it's Jiggy Jaguar from JiggyJaguar.com. Thank you. Good night. Easy. Let's go. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate Definitely. It. Who? There's just like a million comics here this evening. All right. Right. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, go ahead and give us a brief introduction on yourself, my friend. My name is Dennis Cheney. Where am I talking, by the way? At that Here microphone? Here or me, whichever. Right. My name Doesn't is matter. Dennis Cheney. I am a Kansas City comedian. I'm hosting the show tonight with Patrick Moore and Wes Van Horn. Let's go. So, uh, hosting comedy versus being a comedy in the regular rotation, what's that like? Uh, hosting is awful. Uh, you gotta you gotta walk up there and you got to uh, make it a show out of a group of people, right? So you go up and you think this sounds ridiculous, but it's not because you walk into a restaurant per se, start doing comedy, like nobody's gonna listen to you. Like maybe if you walk in and start playing music, someone would listen to you. I'm like looking at you and trying to talk at the microphone. <laughs> no, maybe go if you, ahead, like, wherever you want to go. Walk in and start playing music. Some people be like, ah. You walk in and start doing comedy. People are gonna be like, shut up. You know. <laughs> so that's what you're doing here. Except for people have forewarning. But what you don't realize is there's like this back of your brain thing yeah. that tells you you're either in a group or not. So like my job will be to make them a group. Okay. And hosting's not like a thing. Like nobody's like, I'm a host. Like I'm a host comedian. It's well, not a thing. It's just like there, there have been other host comedians at this very venue. They'd be like, I'm a host. That's, that's their thing. They're really proud of that. Won't say any names. James Davis. We won't say. Yes. Now, um, how have you used social media with your comedy? How have I used social media? Yes. I do. Um, I do sketches with one of my best friends. Um, we went to Second City. His name's Jason Hayfley. We're called the uh, um, Pencil Pushers. We do YouTube stuff. We got stuff on Facebook. That's I want cool. and uh, I want a website. I need to do a website, but I actually have a a video that's going to be filmed to add to the website and actually start booking stuff that's in cool. March. So that's going to be March. But we do sketches already, and we got a daily thing coming out called Footnotes of History. And I'm on a podcast, the Patrick Ryan podcast, um, which is on iTunes. Yeah. And that's that's all my social media stuff. But I don't have a website. Or anything <laughs> you don't have the website, but you got everything. I have else. a Twitter. I think I have like 50 tweets. I need to tweet more. <laughs> you need to tweet more. Yeah. Now, uh, we ask comics all the time: is there is there such a thing as a bad room, or? Yes. A bad set. Because we've had various, especially comics out of Kansas City, it's been 50 50. People Some have of them said there's, like, no, such there's thing. no such thing as a bad room. It's your job to get up there, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. And then we've heard various other people go, oh, yeah, there is such a thing as a bad room. And you just oh, you're, talk you're talking about um, is it always on you or is it sometimes yeah. on them? Yeah. 90% of the time it's on you. Like I said about the creating the audience thing, that's that's something you got to do, and that's hard. And sometimes it nobody does it. Yeah. Sometimes you fail, and then it's too late. But I've had some pretty bad rooms. Um, I had a room for a Toys for Tots show in Kansas City uh, around Christmas time, and there was a guy down front who was an investment banker, and he kept yelling, "Can I say pussy?" Go ahead, right. you he just did, saying, brother. He kept saying, <laughs> "No matter what anyone did, he kept going talk about pussy." And a couple people would try to do pussy jokes, but like that's not. It's like it's like he wanted you to literally stand there and talk about pussy, and like he was like the boss of this investment banker group who had like <laughs> taken over this bar, so everyone nobody could turn against. Bad rooms exist. Nobody can deny that. <laughs> Most of the time when people say it's a bad room, though, it's them. Yeah. But they exist. Talk about Pussy Guy, who's the boss of the investment bank, which is 90% of the audience, and nobody can <laughs> shut him up. That's a bad room. That's a bad what are you going to do? What are you going to do? People try to appease him. People yell at him. People try to... I tried to talk to him. I tried to walk up to him. I walked up to him afterwards, and I was like, hey, buddy. 
like, uh, you know, I didn't say, hey, buddy. That's just like, I'm going to fight him. I'm like, hey, man. You know, and he goes, oh, you're really funny. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. But um, here's the deal. Um, I got a couple really good friends coming up next, and they're really funny. So can you, like, quiet down? Because they got some jokes, and people need to, like, you know, hear them. And he's like, oh, well, I'm from New York. So what I do is I interrupt people, and I'm like, fuck you. I've lived in New York for, like, four years. Like, that is not a thing. Most people from New York are very polite, so stop trying to use that as an excuse for, like, your personality disorder. And then he, like, he, he walked by me, and I'm getting into, like, this weird personal conversation. He walked by me in a way that he, like, 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 like let's go, buddy. Like, he's like, well, I gotta go outside and smoke. Boom, elbow, you know, to my uh, chest. And I just had to ignore it. Because there was a Marine there, because it's Toys for Tots. I, of knew, that, I knew that guy yeah. would break it up. <laughs> that guy would break it up. So how do you deal with uh, hecklers? How do you deal with them? Yeah, how do you deal with a... Um, a lot of people deal with them in a lot of different ways. Some people freak out, and I feel like sometimes when they freak out on them, like, oh my god, you know, I feel like that's like because there's a lot of YouTube stuff of people freaking out on people, but I've seen that backfire. I've seen people freak out and be like, shut the F up, you know, and, they, they freak, and it just ends up making you look like a psycho, because a lot of times the heckler's down front, yeah. and uh, no one else can hear them. Right? Um, so you, you just look like a nutcase because you're like, shut up. Like, nobody knows what you're talking about. I usually just. You, you, you don't want to do a Michael Richards. Yeah. I, you, I, go, I usually just uh, say, hey, I, I hear you. Like, this guy's talking down here. Or, you know, you try to make fun of it. Like, this guy just said, blah, blah. Because a lot of times hecklers are drunk, so they're saying dumb stuff. So I feel like the best way, and I've seen like actual professional comedians do it, the best way to handle a heckler is you repeat what they say, which is always ridiculous, and make fun of it. And that way other people can laugh, and then eventually, I mean, you know, that's the best way to humiliate someone. You don't just flip out or ignore them. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, um, where, where are you appearing here pretty soon in the next couple weeks or so? Where am I appearing? Yeah, are you going to uh, be doing anything? Wednesday, which is February 6th, I'll be at the Improv in Kansas City for the Clash of the Comics. That's cool. Um... I am at Uptown Arts Bar on 39th and uh, Broadway about every Monday. I'm going to be doing a show at K-State in Manhattan, Kansas. Wow. Um, the Friday, the third Friday of February. I'm not sure what that is right now. Yeah. And that's that's all I can think of. I'll be in Lawrence, no, I'll be in Lawrence, Kansas. Whatever, add me on Facebook. <laughs> add me on okay. Facebook. I got posters up. There you go. <laughs> Most of the time, like two days before I show, somebody called me. They go, oh, are you still in for this? I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, <laughs> okay. That's there the way I go. operate. I don't well, have a calendar or anything. You need management. I apparently do. That's my whole life, though. Like, my okay. whole life, when I go to my regular job, when I do anything, yeah. like I'm like, I need a secretary. <laughs> but, like, I make what a secretary makes, That's if not right. less. So, maybe I can get, like, a slave. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what I've had it to is, do. It is Kansas, I need someone all. to run my life. They, 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 they are uh, behind the times on certain things. So Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Hey, thank it's you. A, it's a great interview. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you want me to get Wes? Yes. Go right. grab Mr. Van Horn, and we'll uh, make it happen.